Hi guys, welcome to the first part of a terrain series I'm doing on 40k terrain. So in this one we are um, going to look at, I don't know what's the best way to describe them, mechanic and pipes, power blocks, um, anything that's a little bit more techy. Um, um, the other one is going to be a walkway tutorial. So on this one I've got a part of my uh, one of my kits and I've done it in sub-assemblies so we're going to show some basic techniques as to how to make that look gameable um, and, and ready for the battlefield but the first thing guys I've got a file and I'm just taking away any of those final mold lines and edges okay if you use a file you see in some of the gaps the actual particles will actually fill that gap for you okay and when it's sprayed up it's as if by magic there isn't a gap at all so I'm just going around I've been doing this before the video as well, so anything that we don't want on the kit, let's get rid of it. Let's use a file and get rid of it. And the pipes like that. Rotate the scenery piece as well, because that'll give you a, a, a sort of bevel to your filing um, as you're doing it. So you're not just going to end up with a flat side to a, a pipe or a, I don't know, a vent, whatever you want to call it. So, as I said, I've been doing it before the video, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I'm going to give it a cast black and get on with the, uh, the first stages. There we go, so uh, it's uh, cast blacked, so it's got base coat in there, do you know what I mean? Just snap my fingers as well. Uh, what I'm going to show you is a technique that's relatively quick um, and it's the way I approach terrain. Um, you need a relatively large brush and I'm going to start with Army Painter Oak Brown. Okay, and what I'm going to do with this, it's really, really quite straightforward. I'm going to dry brush this all over the model. Okay, so on my palette to the side, just working it in. And I'm just going to start dry brushing. Okay, and it can be quite a heavy dry brush. Um, it doesn't need to be an exact science. Yeah, some places can be thicker, doesn't matter. I'm not too fussed about the con that, that sort of large area there. Um, reason being, it's going to be red. But what I'm doing here, I'm essentially just building up that sort of basis for additional work later on. So I'm giving it a sort of like a good good base coat if that makes sense so I'm sort of like dry brush wet brushing it whatever you want to say okay and I'm going to do that all over the miniature anywhere where I feel it's going on a bit too heavy let's spread it around and just make sure that we're giving it a relatively sort of good first heavy dry brush of brown okay so I'm going to come back after I've done that all over the kit and there we go so now it's a uh, nice shade of muck <laughs> So I've traversed it quite heavily with brown all over. And the next stage, I'm going to come in with Army Paint and Gun Metal. Shake this really well. Shake all the paints really well, just as a tip for you. And what I'm going to do, just as before, I'm working paint into my bristles and my brush. And I'm going to dry brush it, guys. It's as simple as that. So if I was to start dry brushing the edges, yeah, and I'm going are relatively heavy okay I'm just picking out all those areas of detail again okay okay just come see how that's giving it a it's not a finished look obviously but straight away we're starting to get of that burnished metallic look okay so I'm gonna complete this over the whole piece and then come back to you when it's dry okay so now that I'm happy that the dry brush is dry <laughs> we're starting to get that sort of like burnished age metal look okay I didn't touch this with a wash yet either guys just so you know and you know what some people would be quite happy that's a Decent looking bit of terrain. If that's that's level, that's great, you know. But I'm going to go a few steps higher. higher. So what I'm going to do, 
I'm coming in with some Mephiston Red from Citadel. And I want to have these areas red. Okay. Now I'm not going all the way to the edge here. And the reasoning behind that will become clear as we go on. This thing's been sat there for years or whatever you want to say. Millennia is it? I don't know. And I want it to look a bit worn, so I'm working from the outside in. Okay. All the way along. We'll try and add some weathering to this later on. But what it'll do is just make our terrain piece look all that better. I'm a bit into realism in my painting and the techniques that you can use to sort of achieve reasonably sort of good, relatively quick results. So, you know, like I said before in my other painting videos, I ain't winning Golden Demon and, you know, if you can go out and win Golden Demon, you know, all the best for you. Um, I think that's great. Um, I'm about getting a reasonable effect without breaking the bank that you can be proud of you know so there you go so straight away that's bringing that to life lovely okay um, I'm gonna do the other sides of the panels but the things like here as well so we'll pick out this area here so we'll have that's like a think about an industrial site red canisters things like that like yeah, so I'm going to pick that area out. Um, as we go up the stack as well, there's some pretty cool sort of details up there. So if we think along this area here, I might want to break that up. I'm, I'm using that red along all of it. And it just ties your piece of terrain together. Okay, so I'm going to go in there. I'm not neatly going to the edges. Because again, I want to simulate the fact that the Mechanicum has been doing whatever it is they're doing with this. Um, I think the table that we're going for is sort of like a mechanic and world that my Necrons have sort of awoken on. I said, oi, you're digging up our planet, please stop. Well, as nice as Necrons do say that, probably with lots of flaying and so on and so forth involved in it. But anyway, I digress. I'm going to go through, finish those off, and then we'll see what it looks like when I come back. And there we go. So I've done the red around it. I've picked out the sides of the container, these little bits, that are just any sort of detail. When you're using a sort of contrasting colour like red, um, try and pick sort of areas along your terrain piece. You don't want to overload it with detail, but it's, I think terrain to me, it should be one of those things that it looks cool and people go, oh yeah, that looks mint, but it doesn't overthrow the models, if that makes sense, but it still wants to look pretty reasonable. So the next stage, guys, what I'm going to come in and do standing on the sort of same vein is these pipes so there's lots and lots of pipes all over the miniature and i'm going to hit those with some screaming bell okay and i'm going to give it a bit of a shake and there's no sort of massive secret to terrain it, it is just to get a base coat down and then there's a few techniques we can do to weather it so on and so forth. And those pipes, I'm just going to pick them out. Yeah. And it's just, it's just a little areas of interest that make people think, oh yeah, that's a cool piece of terrain. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty sick. I wonder, wonder what's, you know, what, what else there is on this table or, oh yeah, look at this. This guy's got a really cool setup, you know, for playing 40k. Um, me and my friend, we want to start actually recording some 40k, so it's like it'd be nice to have some reasonable looking pieces of terrain on the table, you know. But terrain really is it's, it's as far as you want to take it, as with all things in this hobby, to be fair. You know, you can go as far as you want with it. But all I'm doing here is putting a nice smooth layer. Screaming bell down on pipes. Okay, 
and I'm not too fussed if I'm going over slightly in places and things like that. Smaller pipes at the minute I'm ignoring. Um, I will come back to them. Um, this minute the bigger sort of areas. The grate in there, I think we'll do that screaming bell because that'll be pretty cool. You know, make it look a bit sort of fairnessy so to speak. And it really is just a bit of trial and error. Think about colours that work well together. Um, think about what matches your table. You know, the reason I'm doing this so sort of quite striking colours is because I'm going to be toning the whole thing down and then adding a bit of weather into it. You know, I've painted a lot of terrain in my time for stalls and all sorts of things, you know, so it's like. You can get a striking effect relatively quite simply just by picking out colours. It doesn't need to be, you know, anything over the top. Um, we all love an incredible looking table, of course we do. But it's it's all about what's best for you, you know. Up here I'm going to pick out these as well. And I'm just taking my time picking out the pipes. Okay, you don't have to be super neat with this stage either because what I'm going to show you in a bit the technique that I use to sort of draw everything together is using another army painted product and some people might say oh that's a bit expensive, a bit wasteful or whatever but really it's not and when you look at the results it's all well worth it so I'm going to go through that I'm going to pick out all of those sort of areas okay, and I'm going to come back to you and there we go, so we've got the, the piping done as well. And like I said before, I spread the colour evenly amongst the uh, the terrain piece. Okay, so it's really sort of starting to come together. Um, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use a bit of Citadel Corvus Black. And I want to just pick out this container in black. And then I want to mirror that up here somewhere. So I think that we'll use these here these pipes will also be black. Um, I don't want to go overboard on black. Um, the reason being is that, well, it's, it's not a natural colour to really sort of see on a lot of things. It's more of a sort of man-made colour. Oh, techno made just made in this case. <laughs> so I'm just getting my paint out. Okay. And it really is as simple as before. We're just going to... Outside in, cover that area up. Across the top, don't forget that. On the other side, bottom here. Yeah. Now, terrain is quite forgiving, you know, when you're painting it because it's particularly if you're in the water on 41st millennium. Are we still in the 41st millennium? I think we are, aren't we? I don't know. You'll have to let me know in the comments. But if you, 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 you we're in a war-torn universe, basically. So let's be totally honest. Nothing's going to look pristine. So so that's that bit done there. It just adds a bit of something extra. Uh, but I want to mirror that up on this sort of area as well. So I'm just going to pick those pipes out. In Corbus. And after we've done this aspect, there's going to be things like the cogs, the cog faces, and then just a, a, a quick whip round and kneading and up any edges, and also any sort of real soft focal points that we want to sort of bring out on the kit. And that should then get us to a relatively good sort of, you know, happy to game with it piece of terrain. Um, You'll have to let me know what you think, guys. You know, if you have you got any techniques that you think are cool, um, you know, what what else do you do to bring your terrain to life? And I've just noticed what I'm going to do here is actually do that black as well. Uh, just just again, it's just that little aspect of difference that just sort of livens up a kit. It 
doesn't have to be brilliant, it's a piece of terrain. You know, can you see how that's really sort of coming along? You know, it's going to look a really sort of good addition to our table, I think, when this is done. So I'm going to let that thoroughly dry. Um, but the next step I'm going to come in with, I'm going to sort of pick out any gold areas. So some of these perhaps will do maybe one or two of those gold, nothing over the top. Um, and then we'll, we'll work on the cog faces at the top. So the cog mechanicus, these things here, um, we'll sort of pick those out. Um, you notice I've not highlighted anything, and the reason why I'm actually going to turn it all down. Um, so I'll come back to you when the corpus black's dry. Okay. Okay, so I'm quite happy that sort of dried nicely. Um, the next aspect what we're going to do, uh, we're going to break out the trusty Corax white, and we're going to do the cog mechanica symbol is half white and then white and then black and then silver. So I've done the black in already there. Um, the silver's already there because we've dry brushed it all. Um, we're gonna do the cog mechanica symbols. Once I've done that, I'm gonna break out some gold and then we're down to a thorough drying session <laughs> for the next stage. So I'll just get my Corax white out, guys. I love Corax white, I think it's a really, really good color. Um, I don't know what it is about it. I just, I've always wanted to paint a white army. Um, you know, yeah, maybe one day. Eh? Um, okay, so this cog mechanic symbol in here, I'm leaving that as if it's embossed. Okay, so it's just stamped in. Because could I reach in there and do that? Probably. You know, is it going to drive me insane? Probably. So, yeah. On the other side. So this is interesting because you've actually done that the wrong way around. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to wipe the skull off. I just leave that one. I think. Yeah, that's very interesting because that cog mechanic symbol on that side is correct. Hey yo, doesn't matter. Okay, so that's a, that's a cog mechanica symbol. I've got one more here, guys, as well, okay? So, coming in with my Corax. Around the other side as well. Okay. Just twitch that slightly. This is like half and half. There we go. So there's your cog mechanica symbols done. Okay. Let's look round it. I don't think there's anywhere else that I would use white. It's not a biffy in colour, really, is it? To war torn hell planets and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to clean the brush off. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to come in with some Citadel Retributor armour. It's gold basically and I'm going to pick out I don't know just any other areas that I think would look nice gold and I'm talking these base plates maybe do them on the other side Yeah, a bit of a weird position to build in this in live recording, to be honest with you. So I ain't got the shakes or anything. <laughs> um, it just again, it's just making it pop just a little bit. Okay, this symbol here. I don't really know what it is, though some of you may do. Uh, please let me know if you do. But I think it's gonna look cool like that. Okay. So. We're not going to go overboard on gold, you know, it's what on universe and all that lot. Um, but again, so I've done a little bit here and there. Here. See, I kind of like that. 
like that. Um, but what I might do is just pick these out, just the circles. Okay, so you've got the same colours, so I've almost strewn throughout your piece of terrain. It just ties it all together. So, so there, look, we've got another sort of symbol on the bottom. And it's just a edge, flat edge of the brush over the top of it. Yeah. Fans and things like that I'm gonna leave. But I do want to bring some gold up here. Okay, so again, like we've said, just ties the kit together, and I think that's absolutely crying out for it. Yeah. It's just bringing that colour palette all throughout the project, okay? And it's not overpowering. It's not like a tower of gold or I don't know, you look like the Emperor's fancy boys or whatever they're called live there. Um, that I'm relatively happy with. I don't want too much gold on there. I just want those nice little accents here and there just to make it ping, okay? Okay, so I'm just gonna wash the brush off again, guys. Now, what you may notice on here, there are obvious areas where we've gone over, okay? And it's the nature of doing terrain. So what we can always do, and the beautiful thing about our hobby, is come back in with my gun metal, give it a really good shake. And I'm just gonna go around, and I'm just gonna neaten up a little bit, okay? And this is, it's not a difficult process. Bear in mind, it's gonna be brighter, so anything like that, if I neaten up there, I'm just going to block in the area, okay? What this will do as well is just add another level of depth to it. It's like around here, for example. I'm happy to block this in um, around the edge, and I'll, I'll explain why when we come back for our next stage, okay? So I'm just going to go around and neaten up, and when I've done that, I'll come back to you for another stage. There we go. So... I'm happy with the base colours, they're on there. And you know what guys, hey, you know, that's quite a, a reasonable piece of terrain to put on your table. But I want to tone all this together. I want to bring it all together. I want to really sort of dingy it up. Um, I just love dingy metal, I don't know why. It's probably an obsession. Um, and I'm going to use Army Paint and Quick Shade Dark Tone. Now, you, you probably all think, are, are you crazy? Like, this is <laughs> X amount of pounds a pot or whatever. What are your tones down? What are your shades down, guys? And the easiest way to do that, get a jam jar. Shake your shade up. Yeah, a couple of big squares. Get your water pot. And just, just ladle it in with your brush. All right. Okay, mix it up. So that's the consistency of my wash. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, and there is no grand secret to this, I'm going to paint the whole thing. Okay. And the reason I'm doing that, if we look on here, okay, as we shade it, this shade is going to do so much work for us. Okay. We just start applying it. And I'll show you what I mean, okay? It brings everything together in one dark tone. Jeez, I'm sure what Army Painter were going for when they uh, when they produce this. So, don't be afraid of things like you know, ball balls and stuff like that. Just get it on your model, okay? I know it used to know a couple of guys that literally painted what 30k armies like this um, so they'd do the base colours and then just apply the art tone over it okay it's going to do a lot of work for us and it's going to sort of really tie it all together and it works over every colour as well okay and don't be afraid to just literally just just brush it everywhere okay 
yes, you'll get drips and things like that coming off your miniature, yeah, but that's why I've got paper down. <laughs> Top tip, unless you want the missus to kill you. Okay. Now I'm um, literally painting the entire thing. Okay. And there's no real secret to it. It is literally paint it on. Okay, now you've, you've probably seen like like the Warhammer TP videos and things like that where they're like, oh yeah, you know, get get a full pot of Agress Earth Shade on that. And you know, that's great and, and the effect is, is, is great, but this will do the same thing for you. Okay? Like that, bang. Straight in there. My pipes are defined straight away. Okay? I'm going through my whole thing. Every aspect of it, metal, it'll darken it down. Colours, it'll darken down. Don't be afraid to just get it everywhere, even with some gold. Okay, so I'm not an anarchist kind of fanboy, <laughs> but I have painted quite a few projects in the time my time where this is a real sort of key thing. I'm not into dipping miniatures or anything like that, but I think when when you're sort of doing an industrial look and a, you know an overall dark, dingy, 40k death world sort of look, this stuff can really help with that. Okay, and I've not squared any more out of the pot yet, guys. Okay, I'm still going. Okay, back to my jam jar. <laughs> okay, so I've got things like that. Yeah. Things like the fans, let's make sure there's plenty on there. Okay, it's gonna drip. There's, there's no issue buts about it, okay? Um, yeah, <laughs> learn from experience. Put, put up some form of cover down. Put some form of, something to protect your burning surface down, okay? This stuff, it, it's not, you know, it'll come out, um, but it is a shade, okay? So, uh, you know, we've, we've all had to scrub table surfaces haven't we before somebody notices that we've clarted it in something and you know this is just one of those things so over a cog mechanicus so see it even does white the difficulty is to see i know whilst i'm doing the whole thing by literally i'm painting the entire piece of terrain with this okay all the way to the top the top there okay I'm not afraid to just get into this kit now with this brush and just really get that dark tone on there it's all like dark to say dark tone it's watered down dark tone handy little hole isn't it <laughs> so there, there can you see on that there the way that that dark tone has done on that gold Okay, and I'm not saying that we're not going to pick some areas out, maybe go away another drying brush and things like that. But what you can achieve with this wash is brilliant, particularly on terrain. Okay, yes, I've used it on miniatures. Would I use it on my Brian and Joy Necron Army? No. <laughs> Would I use it on orcs? Yes. <laughs> it's just things like that, you know. It's. Uh, Okay, so I've absolutely covered that in dark tone. Um, at the minute, you will think to yourself, oh my God, what have I done? Okay, let it dry. So let's let this dry and I'll come back to you. And there we go. So the wash is dry and um, yeah, see, do you see what I mean? It sort of like ties it all together and dinges it down a little bit. So two more stages I want to do. Uh, first one, I'm going to come back in with my Corax white and I'm just going to Give this cog mechanicus just a little bit of love. Okay, doesn't need to be anything incredible. Just, just pick it out ever so slightly. Yeah, just makes it sort of stand. I just make it pop. It is a mechanic and structure at the end of the day. Uh, same on the other side. Uh, here we go. Okay. And we had up there as well, didn't we? Uh, just coming in, just just 
do you know, they're just picking out those little areas of interest. Yeah, and over the dark zone, that really sort of shines straight away with the pun. So that's the correct white done. And the last thing I want to do is I want to put a little bit of extra muck on it. Okay? And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to bring in AK Interactive Rust Streaks. Now, as I'm shaking it up, <laughs> what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pick out rough areas that I just want a bit of extra grime. Okay? And the way I'm going to do this is with a sponge. So I've got my AK there in the lid. It's an acrylic, okay? And I've got this piece of packing foam, okay? And I'm just getting in there and getting it on my sponge, okay? And then I'm dabbing off. <clears throat> you see the effect it makes? And I'm just applying this in certain areas of the kit. Okay, and it's as simple as that, it really is. So that area there. Okay, I'm going back just for a bit more on my sponge. Okay, you don't need to overload it. Make sure you always tap it off so you're happy with the effect you're getting. Okay. Okay, and I'm just... This essentially, guys, is, is what painters call sponge weathering. Um, super dead easy. Yeah, last little bit I want to do. You see how it sort of leaves it in patches. Yeah, it just adds that that little something to the kit, okay? But it doesn't overpower it, and that's the sort of area aspect we're going for. So there we go. So I'm happy with the sponge weathering. The last thing I want to do is just look at this vent. So I'm going in with my AK Interactive again, okay? But this time on a brush, and I'm just gonna apply it here. Okay, now it's in acrylic, as you can see. I'm applying it around this vent. Because I don't know what's gonna come out of this, but to me, this would be any sort of overflow, off run, things like that, okay? And I'm just, just sort of almost daubing it on there. Um, maybe a bit swollen on there downward strokes yeah just to give it that bit of a I don't know like an off flow sort of look I've got a little vent there as well I'm gonna come in there and do the same okay and you sort of build it up until you're happy with it really it's not you know you might want to say right well in the bottom there that's a tight corner so I'll put some some sort of run off into them yeah Just give it that bit of realism because bear in mind yes I'm making this for our 40k videos but I also want to use this for Necromunda okay um, I'm all for multi-use terrain it's a bit around there so I know it's a little bit up here so a bit of a anywhere there might be a bit of grime yeah and I'm just 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 running it down guys that's all I'm doing. It's really, really simple. Like you might find a bit of build up here. So let's go along there, down there. Think about how it'd look, yeah? And that's really it, okay? I might want to pick out a tiny bit here. Just like where it would build up, okay? Those areas there, they would probably be hit by the same thing. You know, and it's just going on until you're happy with it, really. At the top here, so they're sort of like chimney stacks. They're sort of like your, I don't know, where, where the sort of source or whatever it is would come in a bit more of a build up. So, what I'm doing, I've got my trusty sponge again. 
let's go a bit harder on them. Yeah. Bit more on the cog. That's it. Just make it look a bit more realistic. And there we go. So there is one fully painted piece of terrain. So I'm going to let that thoroughly dry and then let's get a photo of it on the table and see what it looks like. Okay. And there you have it. So one completed piece of terrain. So it gives you an idea as to what's capable. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, lots of simple sort of straightforward techniques that can give you a decent look. So by all means, please uh, like and subscribe and uh, there'll be more terrain from Tom soon. Thanks a lot guys. Happy hobbying.